Hi, I'm Tati and these are app recommended books. So there are quite a few bookish apps out there, apps that will help you keep track of the books you're reading or the books you want to read. And a few of these apps also give you book recommendations based on the books you've read or the books you want to read. So I thought it would be fun to try and see which apps give the best book recommendations. So I've chosen four different apps to put to the test. So first up is the Goodreads app, which is the app that I've been using the longest and the one I still use most frequently to just keep track of what I've read and my TBR list. And I do use the star rating feature as well. However, I feel like the one part of Goodreads I've never used is the recommendations. I've never really looked into the recommendations. Usually I get my recommendations from social media, YouTube. Now overall, my expectations going into this is that Goodreads would have a good selection just because it has the most information about what I like already. However, it was a bit of a challenge to find one that I was actually interested in. So since the recommendations are broken up by genre, I decided to look under the thriller category and I found Dangerous Lies by Becca Fitzpatrick. In this one, after witnessing a lethal crime, Stella Gordon is sent to the middle of nowhere for her own safety. She's starting her senior year, but she has to lie to everyone about everything. And just as Stella begins to feel safer and starts letting her guard down, the real threat to her life increases because her enemies are actually closer than she thinks. Now, this one, I don't know if it's one I would have picked up on my own, um, but it was the recommendation that stood out to me the most from all the possible Goodreads recommendations that I was given. So I don't exactly have high hopes for it, but I hope I will enjoy it. I'm hoping it'll surprise me. So the next app I decided to try out is the Story Graph, which I believe is currently the most popular alternative to Goodreads. And it does have the option to import your Goodreads library or your information from Goodreads, which is definitely a plus, so I don't have to manually go in there and put in every single book I've read. So I did go ahead and do that so that this app would have the best possible chance of recommending me something I'd like. And I was actually really impressed with the recommendations I was given. Um, there were a lot of them that stood out to me that actually I ended up putting on my TBR. However, I wanted to try and keep the recommendations as close to each other as possible so that I could compare them on a similar level. So I decided to filter the recommendations to look for thrillers. In this one, Scarlett was stolen from her family as a young girl, but she was able to escape from her captor. Now a teenager, Scarlett is starting her first summer job at an amusement park. However, her first day on the job, a girl goes missing. And as she meets her new co-workers, one of the girls seems strangely familiar. Scarlett will have to uncover the truth before it's too late. This one sounds really interesting and I really love the title and the cover. I'm really excited to read this one. So the next app I tried out is called The Book Sloth, which has a super cute logo and color scheme. I really love that about it. However, at least at the time that I'm making this video, it does not allow you to import your Goodreads library. So I added about a hundred books, about half of them that I've read and rated, and half to my TBR shelf on Booksloth so that I could get some kind of recommendations. Something else I really liked about Booksloth is their review format. Not only do they let you star rate books and write a review like Goodreads, but they also let you choose what parts of the story made it special. So you can choose from the romance or the characters or the plot or the writing style and it's just a simple quick way that you can get a little bit more information about something you may be specifically looking for in whatever books you want to read. So after adding some books into my book sloth library I went under the recommendations under the suspense category and I found You Were Never Here by Kathleen Peacock. This one is about Kat who has not been to her hometown, Montgomery Falls, since she was 12 years old. Since she discovered that she could do things no 12 year old could do and since she had her first kiss with Riley Frazier and destroyed their friendship. 
Now, five years later, she's back, but Riley has disappeared. When Noah, Riley's brother, asks Kat for help in discovering what happened, Kat is torn between protecting her secret and wanting to learn the truth. So this one sounds like a suspense thriller mystery book, but with a bit of a twist. I don't know what the twist is. I have not spoiled myself, though I have been tempted. And next up, I tried out an app called Likewise, which is an app that recommends books, movies, and TV shows. It bases its recommendations on things that you like and things that others who have similar tastes like. It also allows you to recommend things to others and to ask the community for specific recommendations. Now, while there were some book recommendations on the recommendation page, I wasn't finding anything similar to what I had already found, like a thriller or a suspense book. So I decided to dive a little deeper into the from users with similar taste recommendations. And that's where I found To Catch a Killer by Cheryl Scarborough. This one is about Aaron, who as a toddler survived for three days alongside the corpse of her murdered mother. And the case, which remains unsolved, fascinated a nation. 14 years later, Aaron finds herself once again in the middle of a brutal homicide when she finds the body of her biology teacher. Inspired by her FBI agent uncle, Erin has turned her forensic hobby into a full-blown cold case investigation. But when all of the evidence starts to point the authorities straight at Erin, she turns to her longtime crush and fellow suspect to help her crack the case before it's too late. Now this one? Hmm might have the synopsis that interests me the most just because I have a soft spot for teen sleuths. So over the next couple days, I'm hoping a week at the most, I'm going to be reading these four books. And so I'm kind of going to do this in sort of a reading vlog style, I think. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that's what the rest of this video will be. And then I will come back with a wrap up to tell you what I thought of each one, which book recommending app recommended me the best book. So I will be back when I start reading, I guess. Bye for now. Bye. <laughs> so it's been a couple of days and I am finally ready to get started reading the books for this challenge-ish thing that I set up myself. So I'm going to start with Dangerous Lies by Becca Fitzpatrick. This is the book that I got recommended from Goodreads. So we'll see how I like it. <laughs> My expectations are pretty low for this one, but I'm going to try to keep an open mind. much into it but so far it's a bit of a slow start at least for me but around page 40 which is where I'm about it does start to get more interesting so I'm gonna keep reading and I will check in probably around halfway through and let you know how it's going later hi <laughs> so I am now actually a little bit more than halfway through dangerous lies and if you hear the thunder it's because it's raining every single day right now. I'm on page 218 so I thought it would be a good time to give an update on how it's going so far. Honestly the first part of this book was pretty hard to get through for me so much so that I almost DNF'd it and I think it mostly comes down to the fact that Stella was a little bit annoying to me as a main character but as I get more through the story her character is growing on me and so that has made the story much more enjoyable to me and is what has kept me reading. Now when it comes to the I can't really say mystery I don't think is this classified as a mystery? No, it's not really a mystery, but the crime or the case 
the suspense part of this book. I do have some suspicions of what's going on in a few of the characters, including about Stella herself. I'm pretty sure she's lying about something, which would make the title very apt for the story. Anyway, those are just my thoughts at the moment. And where I am in the book right now, both the romance and the suspense have really picked up, so I'm actually very interested to get back into the story and see what happens next. <laughs> and I've just finished Dangerous Lies by Becca Fitzpatrick and now that it's finished here are my thoughts on it. So in the second half of this book there were definitely a few things I saw coming however there were also quite a bit of surprises and while I did struggle with the main character in the beginning of this book and a bit of the dialogue throughout the entire book um, I did find the plot engaging enough to want to see it to the end. And I ended up giving this one 3 out of 5 stars. Now when it comes to how good of a recommendation I thought this was for me personally, I actually think it was pretty good. It has a lot of the elements I would look for or that would interest me or entice me into picking up a YA mystery suspense thriller kind of book. If I were rating the Goodreads app for recommending this book to me, I think I would give it a 4 out of 5 stars. And so we'll have to see later on how this one holds up against the competition, I guess you could say. And so now that I've finished Dangerous Lies, the next book I'm picking up is Never Missing Never Found by Amanda Panich. And this is my recommendation from the story graph. And I am very excited to get into this one because I've heard that the story graph has like the best recommendations. So I'm gonna put that to the test. <laughs> I have started reading Never Missing Never Found but I'm only a chapter in. I'm on page like 16 so I don't really have anything to say about it yet. Um, it's okay so far. I'm not exactly hooked however I am also not feeling the same way I was feeling about Dangerous Lies which was sort of not into it. Um, so that is a plus. So my goal at the moment is to update you again when I'm about halfway through this book so I'm gonna get to reading later. Hi. <laughs> okay so I am officially sucked into this book. I am about halfway through and there are just so many things and I can't even go into it because this one is turning out to be a twisty thriller and I really don't want to spoil any of it. Not that I have any idea of what's going on anyway. And there is not one character I fully trust at this point except Matthew. <laughs> anyway, so far I am really enjoying the writing style and the pacing of the story. Um, on the romance front of it, I would like to ship Scarlett and Connor, but I literally don't trust either of them. And at the moment I'm really just looking forward to getting to the point when all of the pieces fall into place and everything makes sense. It's also sunny outside for the first time in days. So I think I'm going to try to head to the backyard. Hi. <laughs> so this book, Never Missing, Never Found, is so good. I stayed up until like 2 a.m. last night to finish it and it was totally worth it. It is such a twisty ride all the way through but with a really satisfying ending. And the twist is one of those twists that makes you want to immediately go back to the beginning of the book and read it over again because everything in the story will be so different with this shift in perspective. I actually really want to do that right now. I really considered it but I have to move on with my TBR for this challenge 
experiment. I still don't know what to call this. Anyway, overall, I had a great time reading this one. I gave it four and a half out of five stars. Now, when it comes to what this video is actually about, which is rating the app that recommended me this book, which was the Storygraph, I kind of want to give it five out of five stars for this recommendation. There were so many elements that I would look for in a story and not just the obvious young adult mystery slash thriller with romance, but also the sibling dynamics and the unreliable narrator and all of these things were just so well executed that for now I'm going to put it at a five out of five star rating, um, but I reserve the right to change it later. I don't know what the rest of this challenge is gonna be like. So next up I'm going to be reading You Were Never Here by Kathleen Peacock, which was recommended by the app Book Sloth. Um, the only problem I had with Book Sloth was that I couldn't upload my Goodreads library to it. At least when I'm making this video you can't do that yet. So I kind of just had to quickly add as many books as I could and go from there and hope it could get some sense of my taste from that. So I only added like a hundred books. So it is at a bit of a disadvantage. But however, this one does sound interesting. I really love the cover of this one and the title as well. I'm gonna start reading this one and I'll come back and update you. I always say halfway through but I seem to be updating like once I get like a chapter in and then I update halfway through don't really know why. We'll see. I'll, I'll be back sometime before the end of this book to give an update. Later. Hi, I'm back and I've just hit the halfway point of You Were Never Here. And so far the mystery is intriguing, but the main reason I'm still reading is because of the characters. I actually think this one has the most likable, or should I say best written, most readable, most enjoyable <laughs> characters out of the books I've read so far for this challenge. But anyway, I'm going to keep reading this book and I will be back when I finish it later. Hi! <laughs> so I have finally finished You Were Never Here and I've decided on a three and a half out of five star rating. I did enjoy this one for the most part, but I did sort of see the big twist coming and I do wish there was a bit more resolution or even a sequel. Now when it comes to rating the app Book Sloth for giving me this recommendation, especially considering the limited information it had to work with, I'm gonna go with a 4 out of 5 star rating. And so next I'm going to be starting To Catch a Killer by Cheryl Scarborough. And this one is the recommendation I found on the Likewise app, which I had never really even looked at until I started um, getting ready to make this video. So I have no idea how good the recommendations are but that's what we're gonna find out. So this is, of course, another mystery thriller. I think this one is the one where the main character is going to be the most, like, teen sleuthy, I hope. Okay, so I was just, like, reading the blurbs on the back, which I, I almost never do, but I was just trying to think of what to say right now. And it literally says, it nails the dynamic stylings of Veronica Mars and the playful spirit of Bones which are two of my all-time favorite shows. So I just got very, very excited to read this one. Later. Hi. So I am halfway through to Catch a Killer and I am really, really liking it so far. So I thought I would do just a really quick update. I am really enjoying the way that Aaron, the main character, is very much into forensics and the fact that um, both of her friends have skills that lend themselves to crime solving. I do have a very strong suspicion that I know who the big bad is, but I won't say because of spoilers, um, but I do think I figured it out in like the first 100 pages if I'm right. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to keep reading because I cannot wait to see what happens next.
Hi, I'm back. <laughs> and I have finally finished To Catch a Killer. And it's another one that I really, really enjoyed. The mystery, the forensics, the teen sleuth team. However, the romance did feel a bit rushed to me and I did figure out who the big bad was pretty quickly on. And I have a feeling I know what the other big twist is going to be too, though I guess I won't know for sure until I read the second book. Anyway, overall I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars, and now for rating Likewise, the app for recommending this to me, this has so many elements of what I look for in a teen mystery book, a YA mystery book, that I think I have to give likewise 5 out of 5 stars for this recommendation. And that was the last book for this challenge, I guess is what I'm calling it. Um, so I guess I should wrap this whole thing up. So for two of these apps recommendations, I gave them a 4 out of 5 star. That was Goodreads and Booksloth. The other two is Storygraph and Likewise. I ended up giving 5 out of 5 stars too. So honestly, overall, all of these apps did pretty well when it comes to recommending books. If I had to go with one favorite overall, I think it might be the Storygraph, just because it had the highest rating in both the recommendation category and the book itself category. Like if you combine the two, it has the highest rating. However, I think if I'm looking for book recommendations in the future, I think I would use any of these apps. Let me know in the comments which of these apps is your favorite. Also let me know where you find your book recommendations and if you'd like to see me do more videos like this one. I think it could be fun to try book recommendations from different places like different social media platforms, or even from different booktubers maybe. So give this video a like and subscribe to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye. And I need to do a thumbnail. This took me so much longer than I thought it was going to. But it was, it was actually really fun. Cause like, it's a challenge where I got to books. It was a challenge where I got to read books specifically recommended to me. So I really enjoyed all of them. Obligatory smiles in case nothing else works. And I have finished To Catch a Killer. Alrighty. Did I check the first sound? I think I did. I think I did. Why? Ooh, it's pretty on the inside. <laughs> Can you see that? I can't take it off because it's a library book. But when all of the evidence, why? <laughs> that is gonna have to be all cut up and put together in a different way because none of it made sense. <laughs> I test this all out. The angle is not bad. I'm just not sure how I like the lighting. Oh, and the sound. Can you hear the rain? Another day, another rainstorm. <laughs> I'm sitting on a pillow so that I can be higher up. The only reason I'm really doing this update is because I was playing around <laughs> with my makeup. I tried like three different tutorials um, and I just, it came out sort of crazy <laughs> and I just wanted it on camera for Austerity for me to look back on and hate and love. I don't know. I don't know if those transitions are gonna work. All right, so this has to be really, really, really quick because I don't have time for this right now. to the library because these bugs are going to be overdue if I don't return them <laughs> later.